Hello everyone, my name is Adam Vox, and I get this question a lot. What is the best program to play media files? What media player do I use? Or alternatively, why isn't this player or file playing? Because you're probably using the default uh, movies or Windows media player on your computer. So in this video, I'm going to highlight three programs that I actually use to play media files. Only one of which I've actually talked about before, despite the fact that I've been using these programs for probably 10 plus years now. Let's get into it. So at the moment, the only media player program that I'm actively using is called Media Player Classic. And if I open up a video file here of my Elgato HD 60 Pro review, Ever which, since is, which is mislabeled, unfortunately, I will have to fix that. This is Media Player Classic, not to be confused with like Windows Media Player Classic version or something like that. It's just Media Player Classic. And you can often get it if you download the K-Lite codec pack, which has a bunch of video codecs to allow unique video files to be played on your machine, you can it will actually install this player because it's the player that works best with them. And it is just your basic media player, but it handles a plethora of file types as long as you, again, have the codecs installed on your computer. Links to every program I mentioned in this video, along with the k -like codec pack, which you need to play, you know, all the video files in the world or whatever, will be in the description below and the comments probably. But this is pretty straightforward. You have basic controls down here, play, pause, stop, Back, forward, fast forward, stuff, skip frame, mute like I just did here, along with time codes. And then you can click on it to pause it and double click to full screen and all that jazz. And then it says that it's playing with the hardware renderer. And it will just play your basic video files. And then you can choose audio tracks if you have multiple language video or video files. Video tracks if somehow you actually have multiple video track files, which does happen. And then subtitle tracks, uh, renderer settings. That's such a funny word, renderer. You can do a tearing test for VSync, display the current time, show the file name, all this different control over it, but it is a very reliable and very stable player. But there, there's a difference between this and the other program that I'm gonna be showing you in just a second. So this is Media Player Classic. You can get it from mpc-hc.org, or if you get the K-Lite, I didn't actually pull this website up in advance because I didn't think about it, from codecguide.com, K-Lite Codec Pack, you want just the basic or the standard, basic or standard, just download it and install it. It will install MPCHC for you. The other media player that I use pretty regularly, but I'm not using as much at the moment, is called VLC Media Player, which you can get from Videoland.org. This has always been my favorite one, and it, they have a native Windows 8, Windows 10 app, Android apps, iOS app, Mac app, Linux app, Windows desktop app. It's customizable with skins. Uh, you can you can do video conversions in it here. I'll open it up so if I right click open with VLC Nope, that's VLC work for Windows Store. Okay, so here's a preview at the Windows 10 specific version If it'll work. I've never actually tried this. I have no clue how well it works. This is the Windows 10 version Ever since the original Elgato game capture 8 There we go This is the Windows 10 version. It looks just like the movies app, but you're not using Windows app which I guess makes sense. Double click to full screen. Got big tablet-like controls here. Nowhere near the same amount of functionality, I can already tell, but that's okay. And then you have this charm setting menu. Okay, we don't want this. We want the real VLC. The real VLC. Open with VLC Media Player. Okay. Let's resize this bad boy, because that is way too big of a window, and it's going off my monitor now. Windows hates multi-monitor setups once you go past two. Alright, again, you have basic controls. Double-click to full screen, double-click out of it, and it's... Not, again, Windows isn't liking my multi-monitor setup. It keeps the aspect ratio when you resize, basic controls down here. But then if you go up here to media, you can, op you can open up a stream. So if you get a stream URL, you can open up internet radio stations, live streams. Some people even watch their Twitch streamers. They make like shortcuts to their Twitch streamers here and just pull up their Twitch streamers in this video so they can have individual windows of their favorite streamers. That's pretty interesting. And then you can actually stream your own video file from this and convert and save video files from this. But it's not very easy. It's very advanced. It's very convoluted compared to the standard programs we have today. And its limiting factor is that it does not play discs back well. It doesn't have great compatibility for Blu-ray. It doesn't have any compatibility for Blu-rays, which neither does Media Player Classic. And it doesn't, it's never worked great for me for DVDs, though I do use it to play DVDs. The limiting factor is also the benefit with this in that it uses all internal codecs. 
all of the codecs, all of the ways that it reads video files and all of the video files that it can read is all actually included inside the program. You don't have to install K-Lite. You don't have to worry about screwing up your system. It all plays it inside. But that means if you have something obscure or random enough that is, it isn't included, for example, a codec that I use very often for my video editing now, Cineform, VLC can't open it. It can open the audio sometimes, but it can't open the video, despite the fact that this is actually a fairly popular codec now for video editors. But Media Player Classic can just fine. Right there. It opens it just fine. So that is the two I use. And then the third that I use is to open up Blu-rays because I know people are going to ask about this. This is Liwo or Liwu or something like that. I don't care how you say it. It is a free Blu-ray player program. Absolutely free as far as I know it was last time I used it. There is an update to it. I'm going to not update right now. No. But it will play your Blu-rays. I already have a full tutorial on this software or at least like an introductory tutorial. Uh, in the in, on my channel, so I'll post a card icon somewhere and link in the description below for that. But that is the program I use for Blu-rays. I will be doing a slightly different video for this for Linux, although VLC will still be my primary app for that. But I just wanted to make a video explaining what media players I use and which ones I recommend you should use, aka VLC or Media Player Classic, because they are much more capable and expansive than Windows Media Player or Mo the Movies app. And if you're using something like OBS and you can't get your audio track to work, like so many people have told me so far, which has inspired this video, that, oh, I recorded to MP4 and OBS and now I don't have audio. No, Windows Media Player just isn't reading your audio, but if you open it up in VLC or Media Player Classic, you got audio. So I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, smash the like button, get subscribed for more awesome videos, tech content. I'm here to make tech content easier for you, and I will catch you in a future video.